Hey guys, Chris here for Tolman's Guitars and Basses. Welcome to Guitar Tech Tips Q&A number four. I love reading the comment sections on their videos. You guys are full of awesome questions and answers and reactions and everything. So let's start with a subject we were talking about in one of the Q&A videos, uh, and that's statically charged guitars. What can we do about it? How can we fix it, basically? And you guys reacted, which is awesome. First of all, Bernd Gerbel uh, wrote, statically charged guitar solution. It's most likely the pickguard is generating the charge. Rub a drier sheet on the guitar and it will go away, which is something you guys should definitely try out in case you have something like that going on with your guitar. Also, Maluya64 wrote, concerning static problems, I had hardly been Telecaster with a crackling noise when touching the pickguard beside the pickup switch. I removed the pickguard and glued aluminium foil on the inside of the pickguard. The crackling noise was completely gone. Thanks a lot for all the reactions. I love having these and uh, I'm sure it helps a lot of us players. I love the idea of using aluminium foil or aluminum foil uh, under the pickguard because it has two functions. First of all, it helps with this crackling charging issue. And second of all, it also shields the electronic in case you have your pickups on the pickguard itself or there are wires running around under the pickguard. It helps with that ground noise and all the noise issues. We had this crazy acoustic guitar string type shootout video and explanation video. Lucy the Giant wrote, I don't know why, but a lot of these sound the same to me, lol. Uh, yeah, I was surprised too, because uh, here in the room, we definitely heard a bigger difference. And especially I felt a bigger difference because I was the one playing the guitar. So um, obviously all these strings will have slightly different tension. Uh, they will feel different under the fingers. One is more scratchy uh, when you slide, one is just smoother, etc. So there are minor differences which make a lot of sense to consider as the player, you know, being the player. But um, in terms of recorded guitar sounds or like amplified guitar sounds on stage, those differences are like audible differences are super small, which was a big surprise for me too but it's how it is. Jimmy Galloway wrote under our John Petrucci guitar setup reveal video. I actually was backstage in Atlanta and got to play one of his guitars. I was friends with his tech then, not this chap. He means not Maddie. Uh, his strings are so low you can't play any strings open. They are not only low, they're hyper low, <laughs> like unplayable low. He, he makes it work. I like the struggle of fighting a guitar a bit. I couldn't imagine gigging a guitar with his setup, but each his own. That's exactly, your last sentence is exactly what um, the reason is for this m short series where we talk with guitar tags of our guitar heroes or with the artists themselves. It all depends on your personal playing style. If you have a heavy picking hand and you grab the strings real hard, you will definitely have to have a higher string height or string tension. Um, John Petrucci uh, doesn't look like he's petting the strings, <laughs> but he doesn't have a heavy hand. And that's also, I mean, clear, right? If you're such a shredder and a fast player, you don't want to struggle with the guitar. You don't want to fight the strings and you definitely need a lower setup. I personally would not go that low because I also dig in, especially if I'm playing guitars that sound great uh, when you hit real hard guitars with single coil pickups, which doesn't compress that much. Still, immediately when I'm trying to play something faster or more challenging, I will grab a guitar that has a lower setup because it just feels so much better. We're still talking about the Petrucci setup video. CLVU Stefan, or Stefan. Uh, you do small adjustments if the guitar had a good setup sometimes before buy a new Strat or a Squire today. It comes with a two and a half millimeter action and truss rod uh, almost not engaged. So please think before repeating what everybody says in these kind of videos. Um, factory setups are sometimes uh, very basic, sometimes surprisingly perfect. Guitars travel around from one continent to another before it arrives at your place or before it arrives in the store you buy it. Um, it's absolutely normal that the neck will ch move around its wood temperature and humidity changes. Um, it's absolutely normal. So don't expect 
um, factory setups being a perfect shredder setup. Um, that's why we shot all of those setup videos in this series pretty early on. I'll have the playlist in the description box um, below this video and uh, you'll find all the steps you need. You have to make sure the neck is alright first, then the nut and then the bridge and the saddles. If you do that, um, it doesn't really matter how the state, the setup state of the guitar is at this moment, you will get very close to a kind of ideal setup. And of course, you can fine tune it to the way you like it and you prefer your guitars. Um, no one can help you with that because that's so personal. Breno Giraffa writes, your knowledge is incredible, Chris, thank you. I'm humbled. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> One question. Once and for all, what does adjusting the truss rod do? Uh, and how can I tell if it's bent like a bow or too stiff? Uh, I'm guessing you mean too straight. Uh, well, there's an easy trick. And uh, let me just show that first. Uh, you grab the guitar, you push down the last fret and the first fret on one string, let's say the sixth string, and then you go as much in the middle as possible with the, your pinky here or with your thumb on the right hand and just push it down. And you will see how much space there is between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret, somewhere in the middle. It could be the 12th one or the uh, 11th or 10th, whichever you can grab. And um, that will give you a pretty good idea of how the neck looks at the moment. If there's a lot of space between uh, the string and the top of the fret, then the neck is hanging through. So this means it has like this shape. If there's literally no space between them, then this, the neck is dead straight or even over bent, which looks like this. So uh, that will help you to get in, a, in the green zone of uh, your neck shape or the, the truss rod, and then you can adjust it accordingly. If it still buzzes somewhere, you can, uh, uh, of course, adjust again, or uh, if it's still too high, you can make it even lower or straighter. Uh, we have an episode on that too. As told, the playlist is in the description box. Chris Ruse, if I was to file down a guitar nut to put thicker strings on, would I be able to go down to a smaller size string set in the future? Uh, depends on how thinner the new strings will be. If you have your nut filed for, I don't know, 11 to something, 50 something, and you want to go back to 10s, that might work still. But if you are planning on using 13s or something similar, like really thick strings, and then you go back to 10s or 9s, it's not going to work because uh, you will have tuning issues. The strings will basically move around in that slot because let's say this is one huge knot slot and this is a string, it will just rattle around sideways. So it doesn't just slide by bending or tuning the string, but it moves around sideways, which is not gonna help with noises, sitar buzz, and uh, obviously with tuning stability neither. So uh, you will definitely have to fill up the nut or swap the nut is probably the best thing you could do. Let's talk about Floyd Rose tremolos for a bit. Giuseppe Pratola. Hey Chris, I have a question for your next Q&A FAQ video. How do I adjust or reckon if the nut is correct on a double locking tremolo system? If I change string gauges, uh, do I need to do something? Nobody speaks about the nut on a Floyd Rose equipped guitar, even on YouTube. Thanks, man. Always very informative. Thanks a lot, Giuseppe. Um, it's, a, it's a bit more complex. If you have a standard nut on a guitar, it's way easier to file it deeper, fill it up if necessary, or swap it. If it's a locking nut on a Floyd Rose or similar tremolo loaded guitar, but you check it the same way. So you do the same thing, which is going to be pushing a string down at the second, like behind the second fret and then testing above the first fret if there is any space left. It shouldn't be a lot, but a little bit. There should be a bit of a movement uh, still going on. If it's too low, you will have to make that locking nut go up higher. For that, you'll find shims. You have to unscrew the whole uh, locking nut and put in um, accordingly a thinner or thicker uh, metal shim. These are pieces of metal that uh, will fit under these um, locking nuts. So that's doable. If you want to go lower with it, if you will have to file away some wood under the nut. I would not recommend doing that yourself unless you are some sort of a professional in terms of woodworking and stuff. Um, 
you can go too low, it can become too uneven. So it's a bit of a hassle and that's probably the reason why you don't find a lot of DIY kind of tricks uh, to set up or change the setup of locking knots. Maurizio Canva has a question. Hello there, question. I have a guitar that has dents in the first three frets. The rest of the frets are almost new. Do, do you advise to do a leveling job or could I replace only the first three frets and level them to the rest? Thank you, love your content. Thanks a lot, Maurizio. Um, appreciate it a lot. Um, first of all, <laughs> without uh, trying to sound rude or anything like that, I don't recommend leveling or swapping frets unless you have some sort of an experience with it, especially not on your favorite guitars and especially not on expensive guitars. It's a very uh, delicate thing to do. But in case you just want to know like what I would consider doing, if those dents on the first three frets are really deep, like these little V-shaped little uh, carvings basically are way deep, I would probably want to swap those frets and then level them to fit the height of all the other frets. And if those are just sort of ugly, but not way deep, I would probably level the whole fretboard and um, just stick to the same original frets. That's normally what you do, unless as told, those frets are like way, way, way down and destroyed basically and useless. It's always best sticking to the original frets of a guitar. And uh, that's why refretting or partially refretting a guitar is not the first thing I would recommend doing because the fretboards and the guitar will just accept a couple of refrets in its lifetime. You cannot refret a guitar every second year and uh, expect the fretboard to sort of survive all that work and everything. So um, if it's possible and those dents are not too deep, go for a uh, complete fret leveling and um, see if it works. If the frets are then too low, then you'll probably have to refret the guitar after a time. Thanks a lot for all the awesome comments. I love reading them. I try to react to as many of them as possible. And uh, well, maybe your next comment is gonna end up in one of these Q&A videos. You guys are amazing. Don't be afraid of setting up and fixing guitars yourself. It's time to become your own guitar tech. To what, Chad? To Chad. Chad? Chad, uh, country in oh. Africa. Oh, da, da. Yeah, yeah. Whew. I'm a fire. Mm.